Welcome to Looking for Pythagoras, Investigation 3, Problem 3.2. And in today's investigation, we're going to do a classic proof of the Pythagorean theorem. And the idea here is that each of these squares represents the area of the square of each side of this triangle. So this side, this leg square here has this area, whatever it is. This leg square has this area. This is a square off of that side. And then this third side, which is the hypotenuse side, this square represents its area. And according to the Pythagorean theorem, the area of these two smaller squares should add up to the area of that larger square. And that's kind of difficult to really prove if I just try to lay these squares over each other because the spaces, it doesn't, it's hard to tell if this little bit is going to fill in there. But there's a way to prove that these two squares, this one and this one, have to add up to the area of that square. And that's really what the Pythagorean theorem says, is that the area of this square plus the area of this square have to add up to the area of the third square, the one from the hypotenuse side. So what we're going to do is have this two squares, and these two squares have identical areas. They're exactly the same size. And I actually have bunch of these little triangles and what I'm going to do is take four of these triangles and place them in one of the squares like so and the other four and fit them in to the other square little different way. But if all of these triangles are the same size, so two in there like that, and two in there like this like this. And so Ideally, you can see that I have four triangles in each of the two squares. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So those four triangles in each of the squares have to have the same area. And so what's left behind, this and this, have to equal what's left there. So here's one of my squares. And you can see which side of the triangle it actually sits on. It sits on that leg of the triangle and that one and then my little square fills in that space very nicely and so it fits on the other leg side of the triangle and you notice this one's tilted and that's because that's the hypotenuse side of the triangle this side and that's where this other square belongs and so if these two squares are exactly the same size, which they appear to be, if I can get these to stay in place, I can look to move around, then all the spaces in the two squares are filled and according to the Pythagorean theorem the area of these two smaller squares has to add up to the area of the larger square because these four pieces of triangle in each are all the same size. That means these two have to be the same area covered by those. And so ideally that means that the Pythagorean theorem should always work on a right triangle because if you take the area of the leg square plus the area of the other leg square it has to add up to the area of the hypotenuse square. And that's why we call it a proof, is because it proves that this would always be true, even if we change the triangles to different sizes and shapes. And there's some other versions of this problem that you could find with different size triangles and different size squares. But if we take the squares of the areas of the legs and add them together, they have to equal the hypotenuse squared. So let's just take a problem 
where we have a triangle, a right triangle, and we have, there's my right triangle, we have a leg length of 3 and a leg length of 5. And so we would say that 5 squared, which is the area of this one, is 25, and 3 squared, which is the area of this leg square, is 9. And so if this is true, 25 plus 9 should give us the area of this square. So I'm going to try to see if this actually comes out to be what we expect it to be at 34. I like to cut these into triangles and squares themselves. So there's four squares in the middle and then each of these 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, each of these is seven and a half. So seven and a half and seven and a half and seven and a half and seven and a half. These triangles are then four in the middle. So I put that together and that gives me a total of 34 square units, so it works. 25 plus 9 is 34. The whole point of that is to get to this length right here. So the length of this hypotenuse side of this triangle is the square root of 34. Because the side length of the square is the square root of the area. If I know the area is 34, it gets me the side length which is what I wanted in the first place. So this says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is c squared. This is a squared. If we think of 5 squared, a squared is 5 squared, which is 25. And b squared, if we think of b squared, as 3 squared as 9 equals c squared. And c squared is actually 34. So we already know, and it's really the square root of 34 squared if you really want to be technical, because this is c. c is the square root of 34. So if we want to actually think of it that way, because we can square all of these, 5 squared, and so they go back and forth. 5 squared, the, the a, a is the square root of 25, b is the square root of 9, and c is the square root of 34. So those are our different lengths. This one we just leave because it's a irrational root. It's a number that we don't know the actual value of. So it looks like the Pythagorean theorem works for us. And we'll be using that on lots of different triangles throughout Investigation 3 and beyond.